What is going on guys? They call me Epi. Welcome to another video on the channel today. I just got back home from San Francisco from a Ubisoft PR event and they let us record some Ghost Recon Wildlands gameplay footage there. I wanted to say thank you to Ubisoft for flying me out there. Thank you to Ubisoft for letting me record Ghost Recon. And we are here to talk about the full in-game character smith. That is the character creation process, all the options available for us for Ghost Recon in the game as of this point. Of course, things are subject to change. I don't know if all these options are going to make it into the final build of the game, but with about a month or so, a little bit more than a month before release, I'm sure these are a good representation of the options that we are going to get for Ghost Recon character customization. So, with that being said, I have a playlist that is dedicated to all things Ghost Recon, so if you guys are eager to know more about the game, please check out that playlist and watch the videos. You could learn a thing or two. I'll have an annotation on screen at the end of the video that will also redirect you to that same playlist. So, I have a lot of Ghost Recon videos coming for this week. Some in-depth insider looks at Ghost Recon and some lesser known things that you may not know about the game in general. So, I'm very excited about that and again thank you to Ubisoft for having me in San Francisco I really had a great time and I'm really excited to see this game launch on March 7th so with that all being said the character smith is something that I am personally looking forward to I was eagerly anticipating and prior to seeing this footage prior to actually playing it and experiencing it for myself there's a lot of options here and I didn't think this game was going to go this far in depth being that this is not an RPG it's not a role-playing game it's an action adventure shooter so as someone who personally appreciates character customization and honestly spends more than enough time in the character creation process. I really appreciated this system and how in-depth it actually ended up being. You can see I'm breezing through all of these options available in the character smith and it did take about eight minutes to go through more or less all of the options. If you want to go back and skip, pause the video, skip to other parts of the video, you can do that at your leisure. I captured everything in the build at this current time and you guys are going to see that there are male and female options for your ghosts and depending upon which gender you pick, there are slight variations in the face customization but more or less all of the appearance customization is pretty much the same across the board so it was a little bit disappointing to see that the genders both have similarities if not identical appearance customization options but at the same time I can't get really too hung up on it because again it's an extensive system and the facial customization options for both male and female do differ even though it's slight so I could appreciate that much of the character smith now if there's one thing I've noticed about Ghost Recon is that the developers have emphasized and assured that gameplay overall above all else impacts everything else you do in Ghost Recon so what I mean by that is that players are restricted to certain customization options until they unlock that content in the game itself. So, players will not have access to La Plaga or El Pulpo's hat options until they defeat La Plaga and El Pulpo. And those are just two examples. There are many more options that are restricted to game content until you actually unlock that content by simply playing the game. And that's a great feature overall that keeps people on playing. Character progression is not just limited to the game itself. It extends it to character creation and skill trees. And it makes you feel as the ghost every action you perform in Bolivia, whether it's customizing your character or enhancing your skill trees or completing missions, it has a purpose. This open world is actually alive, it's breathing, and everything you do, every action you perform has a consequence or, again, on the other side of the coin, a reward for you to customize your character with. Now, because this is a living, breathing world and because you'll be unlocking character customization throughout your adventures in Bolivia, they do allow you to customize your character after you spawn into the world. That is, post-character creation, you can customize your ghosts whenever you would like. You can pull up the menu and do almost everything. You can customize almost everything everything you had at character customization with an exception for your specific gender as well as facial customization so you cannot change these two options as soon as you hit create character and you spawn into the world of Bolivia there is a prompt as soon as you create your character it lets you know and I kept that at the end of the video so you guys can see what that looks like you could go in and customize just about everything you want whenever you want in Ghost Recon Wildlands except for your sex as well as your facial customization those two options can only be accessed at the character creation screen which I think is a good balance most titles these days restrict our character customization a Ability to recustomize our characters and we're kind of stuck with what we have unless we pay microtransactions to get a coupon or a token of some sort that lets us recustomize our characters but not in Ghost Recon. On the other side of the coin there is some permanence to the choices that we make at character creation. Gender and facial customization you got to make sure you like what you see and you like what your character is going to be like kicking some ass out there and I think that's going to please a lot of players because this choice does count at least for something. As far as some of the camouflage options on some of the equipment you can use in game some equipment did have more camouflage options than others. I'm not sure if that was just for this build or if that's going to make it into the final version of the game, but it's definitely worth mentioning that some backpacks, for example, have 20 or so camouflage options, whereas some hats only have about two or three. So I'm not sure what the intention is there. I don't know if some are missing, but it's more or less a minor qualm for me overall. I think my favorite part about this customization is that we have some various ghillie suits available in Ghost Recon, and with a game as big as this, and because this is an open world, it's going to be very easy to blend into our environments 
and they give us a lot of ghillie suit choices. From the titles that I've played over the years, the FPS titles anyway, I've seen a couple of ghillie suits being used across platforms and games, and this one just about checks all the boxes about everything that I could think of off the top of my head for ghillie suit variation. So if you're really hardcore and you enjoy ghillie suits, this is going to be the game for you because they give you a head slash body upper torso customization option for ghillie suits, as well as a pants slash shoe option for ghillie suits, and you can change those and mix those and match those in any way you'd like. So on top of all the head customization, as well as the eye customization, goggles, glasses, boonie hats, everything, scarves, everything you could wrap around your head in Ghost Recon Wildlands. Another thing that stood out to me as far as the character smith goes is their attention to detail. Most games would simply stop at the backpack customization, or the scarf customization, or the gloves, or the boots, or the pants, whatever it is, simply covering your character in a specific article of clothing would be their limit. Now, I know that the Ghost Recon camouflage options aren't very extensive, and I agree with you guys on that. I know that's gonna come. One of you guys, if not most of you guys, are gonna mention that the camouflage options are lacking, and that's okay. In my opinion, that's the least of my problems, but this game takes it the extra mile as far as adding specific patches, specific character patches, emblems, and logos onto your backpack as a stitch. I honestly was not expecting to see anything like this in character customization. I thought backpacks were enough, and again, there's a lot of backpacks that you could choose from, but most, if not every single backpack in Ghost Recon Wildlands has a emblem or a stitching pattern that you could place on the back of your backpack center screen, so I'm not entirely sure if they're going to allow custom uh, player input badges on your backpacks. That would absolutely take this game to an entirely new level as far as character creation goes, but think about it for a second. Competitive clans and PvE co-op doing all kinds of missions with character badges on the back of their packs, identifying character badges and leaderboards, and it would make this game really super competitive, at least for PvE, and even more so if we had to talk about some elements of PvP. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to let the rest of the customization options flow through. Again, make sure to check out those patches because I think they are one of the coolest, if not the most important part of this customization option. If we can make it extend into personal, customized, player-inputted patches from the community, that would take this game to an entirely new level, and I would appreciate it that much more. So, if you enjoyed these videos, please sure to check out the playlist in the description, as well as the annotation on screen at the end of the video. This is Ghost Recon, and this is the game that is launching on March 7th, and I am excited. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have been Ampy. I will see you guys on my next Ghost Recon Wildlands video.